It has been four days since my switch to the i3 tiling window manager. So, how are things going? Let's discuss. So, first things first. My biggest gripe on day one when I switch to i3 is the fact that i3 out of the box has no way for you to swap workspaces. And I mentioned that in that video and a lot of people were a little confused what I mean about swapping workspaces. Well, the way most tiling window managers work, so I have three multi-monitors, right? I have three monitors. I have monitor one on workspace one, monitor two on workspace two, monitor three on workspace three, and say I have programs opened on all three monitors. Well, say I want to switch monitor one, workspace one, with monitor two, workspace two. The, on most tiling window managers, you just mod the number of the workspace, and they naturally swap places, right? Uh, workspace one now becomes workspace two. Workspace two now becomes workspace one. All the windows on each just naturally swap places. That does not happen with i3. It does not have that functionality built in. But once again, I, I mentioned I, I keep finding shell scripts, uh, hacks on the internet that people have contributed. Here is another user contributed hack for i3, swapping workspaces. It's basically just a shell script here. A guy has this shell script. It requires JQ, but you probably already have that on the system um, as far as a dependency. Uh, you save this shell script somewhere on your system, and then you just have a key binding to run that shell script, and it should have that workspace swapping functionality now. I haven't tried it, but I, I may. Uh, I, I'm trying not to hack i3. Uh, because I've already, uh, again, I complained about user layout saving uh, like a tiling layout. Uh, so I have a particular layout of windows that I want to save. i3 does not have that functionality out of the box, but I, once again, I found a user contributed shell script on the internet that allowed me to get that functionality. So I don't want to hack on i3 to the point that I try to make i3 into something that it was not designed for. I don't want to make i3 into Xmonad or Qtile or Awesome. Uh, because if I'm going to the point of hacking i3 to such an extent, I, I probably should just switch to a different tiling window manager. So I'm going to try to use i3 as the i3 devs intended. So I'm, I'm going to try not to, to add too many of these hackish, you know, bash scripts to the system. Let's take a look at my desktop, by the way. My desktop has changed since day one. <laughs> uh, the, the big thing that I worked on was the polybar. So the a, a example polybar that comes with polybar looked good, but you know what? I, I kind of like old school, simplistic stuff. Uh, I like the old like power line themes. You guys remember in my Qtile desktop, I configured the Qtile panel at the top to have this kind of power line um, kind of theme to it. Basically, I hacked Polybar to basically mimic the power line theme that I was kind of using in my Qtile bar. Things kind of stand out because each widget in the bar, of course, has a different background color and everything. I mentioned I didn't like the i3 bars because you couldn't really change font colors. You know, I don't mind just having plain text in, in a bar. You know, I don't need a fancy bar, but, you know, if I've got 10 different widgets displaying information in, in the bar, I really need... You know, something to separate each one visually, and changing the font color would be nice. i3 bar, you couldn't do that. I guess there's some hacks on that, too, out there, because I did get people messaging me saying there were ways to hack the i3 bar to be able to change font color for each individual widget. But again, if I'm going to the trouble of really hacking on something, you know, I just switch to polybar. And I'm, I'm happy with polybar. Plus, uh, people have been asking me to take a look at polybar for a while on the channel, so I'm glad I've been playing with it the last couple of days. For those of you wondering how I got the, the power line kind of effect in polybar, it was pretty simple. Let me open up a terminal here. I'm going to zoom in. Anyway, let me cd to the uh, config file for polybar. So, yeah. What is it called? Uh, config, okay. So, about Vim. We'll open this in Vim. Config. And this is the polybar config file. And if I page down a little bit, you will see some extra modules that I added that were not here before. These here. You see these Unicode 
uh, arrows, basically left pointing arrows. Um, that is the uh, the arrow, the left pointing arrow in the poly bar. It's just a Unicode character. You set that to whatever font color, and then the the widget right behind that arrow. You just set to the same color, and you get the power line effect. It's actually pretty simple to get that set up. Uh, was not complicated at all. I, and I'll probably go ahead and start pushing my polybar config to my GitLab page. I'll try to do that sometime this after afternoon. I've, I've never played with polybar until the last couple of days, so I don't have a polybar config on my GitLab, but I'm going to start pushing this one. By the way, this... Uh, this uh, polybar config is not the same one that I was using day one, obviously. Uh, the example one, you know, I, I knew I was going to change pretty much everything about the example polybar config. So what I did is I looked around the internet for a nice polybar configuration file uh, that I wanted to play with. And what I went with is I pulled the polybar config down from Arco Linux. Arco Linux, they have a GitHub repo. And their polybar config has every single module known to man. <laughs> <laughs> in it. Now they're not all activated of course, otherwise you know this bar would be completely full of all kinds of stuff. So it would prob probably be unreadable. But if you go through the, the modules here, if I go past where I was actually just at with my arrow modules for the uh, power line effect, see my modules, arrows, this is me. But after that you see modules A through Z. And A through Z there are a ton of modules that Eric Dubois and the Arco team have added to this config. Uh, things for displaying CPU, memory, disk usage, uh, AUR updates, <laughs> and pretty much everything. So, uh, any of you guys looking for a good config file, go pull down the Arco Linux Polybar config. Uh, of course, I'm going to start pushing mine to my GitLab page for those of you that kind of want this uh, power line effect. Um, again, pretty simple to do yourself. Let me pull up my i3 config. Uh, it hasn't changed much since day one. Let me zoom in a little bit. But one of the things, you know, with the config, uh, let me scroll down here to right here. So change container layout, stacked, tabbed, toggle, split. So I've been, you know, talking to a lot of people that use i3 on a regular basis, and they mention, you know, the fact that it doesn't have pre-configured layouts bothered me, and, you know, I wanted to save pre-configured layouts so I could always come back to the same layouts, and a lot of people were saying, well, they just use uh, i3, you know, in stacking mode or tabbed mode, and you know what, I should start doing that. Again, I want to try to use i3 as the i3 devs kind of intended it to be used, so if I open up, I don't know, let me open up VIFM. Uh, this is my uh, current file manager of choice here, VIFM. Um, um, by the way, <laughs> for those of you wondering, that was like a W3 image preview. I was hacking on uh, VIFM to kind of get that to work. I can't quite get it to work, at least not here in URXVT. So, uh, anyway, that's a, a separate video. I did get the icons to work in VIFM. You notice I've got icons in the VIFM file manager. Anyway, uh, mod W on the keyboard, I believe, gets me to uh, the tabbed mode. So now you see I have two tabs at the top. I have Vim and then VIFM. So now mod J and K, I believe, can swap between the two uh, if I have focus on it. Or maybe it's, uh, say this is mod H and L in this case. Well, J and K, of course, normally up and down, but usually if you have two windows, you know, like a on most tiling window managers, J and K would cycle through them. Not so in I3, but I understand why they use uh, H and L in this case. Because really, that's, that's the proper directions you should be going. So mod H goes in one direction, mod L goes in the other. If I wanted to open up something else to demonstrate this, this, this tabbed mode, I could open up, I don't know, how about H top? And now we have three tabs at the top of the page. We have the Vim tab, oh, and we've got mouse functionality, VIFM, and H top. But of course, you probably wouldn't use the mouse to cycle through the tabs. You would do mod H to move to the, to the left and mod L to move to the right. So that is tabbed mode, and I kind of like that. Now, I, I typically you know, use most of my stuff in full screen modes anyway, uh, web browsers, text editors. Usually I, I put them full screen. So this tab mode is kind of nice because you, you can have three, four, six windows open. They could all be full screen and you just have this one line at the top, you know, with the tabs on it and you can cycle through them. So that is pretty neat. 
Uh, the other mode, I believe, was this mode here, which is called stacking mode. Mod S gets you to stacking mode. So mod W to the tabbed mode. Mod S to the stacking mode. Same thing, you cycle through, except this time instead of H and L for left and right, J and K. So mod J for uh, down. So mod K goes back up. Or you could just keep hitting mod J and it'll eventually go back to the top and keep going down. Same thing, K, you can go in reverse. So that is the two different modes, stacking and tabbed. If you want to go back to the standard split window mode, mod E gets us back to, you know, three different windows tiled, all showing on the screen at once. And mod shift to C to close all of this. So that is a little bit of what I've done with i3 in the past uh, three days. Since I made that first video, I spent a lot of time day one in i3, several hours playing with i3, trying to get used to it. Since then, the last three days, I haven't done much. I mean, I've been on my computer, but I haven't really just been tinkering with i3. I've been made a couple of videos, but that didn't really involve me doing anything with, with i3. Set up OBS on one monitor. I record uh, my second monitor, and then on the far left monitor, I usually like have some notes, maybe a web browser open. So uh, just, you know, day-to-day -day doing my daily work. I I'm going to be just fine in i3. I'd be fine in any window manager. Uh, I've used pretty much most of them at one point or another. Floating window managers, tiling window managers, you know, I, I can live in anything, and I think I'm gonna be just fine in i3. I'm gonna try, again, to use i3 more as the devs intended. I'll play around a little bit more with the, especially the tab layout, I kinda like that. Uh, but I do, I, I'm going to miss having pre-configured saved layouts. One thing that still bugs me, the swapping workspaces thing kinda bugs me too. Uh, again, I do have the little, hack that this guy uh, posted over at the i3wm.org site. Uh, I might play around with that. I might not. I don't know. Before I go, this show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Dylan, Leo, Rob, and Tony. They are the producers of this show. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Also brought to you by all those ladies and gentlemen. You see all those names on the screen. They are the supporters of this channel. If you would like to support my work, please consider supporting DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.